Hi, I'm Dr. Jamil Smith, pediatric psychologist at Wayne Pediatrics, and welcome again to Pete's Talk. So you can search nearly any online news source and you'll likely come across an article uh, on mental health and youth. Um, and this issue has become even more prevalent in the wake of the pandemic, news coverage about war abroad in um, you know, challenges within our political system in the US, gun violence involving unarmed citizens. And so May is Mental Health Month, and I am so pleased to have with us um, my colleague and guest, adolescent medicine specialist, Dr. Sharon Marshall. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yes. So Dr. Marshall, how would you define mental health? What is it? Um, what I talk about with patients is our emotional well-being, being, how they feel on the inside. Um, sometimes that's not the persona or personality they show to everybody else, but how they're feeling on the inside. Because we all have good days and we have bad days, but when you're doing well emotionally, you can kind of get through those. But when you're having problems or you're really worried or feeling down, it's oftentimes a struggle. Yeah, I like the way that you try to get patients to key into how they're feeling on the inside. Um, I think a lot of young people can kind of get to that um, idea in a way that's understandable. Um, as a pediatrician, how are you able to support patients' mental health in a clinic setting? Well, in the office, depends on your um, on the patient, but younger children, you can ask them how they're doing in school and parents often have a pretty good idea of their functioning, how they're sleeping, how they're eating. Um, for older kids, you really have to talk with them directly because their parents may not know, you know, the ins and outs of their days or their feelings. So we ask them, you know, how are you doing at school? Um, what do you enjoy? Do you have friends? Or, you know, how has the pandemic affected you? And you can learn how kids are coping. And I think it's important to let them know that it's okay to feel stressed. They're not the only one um, that has those feelings. The majority of people during the pandemic have felt very stressed, regardless of what country they were in. It's been a very upsetting experience and the war abroad, and the violence you've mentioned, all of these things are happening every day. And teens, you know, have it on their phone and it's, you know, up close and personal to them. Yeah, yeah. I like how you don't ask the question, how's your mental health? Yes. <laughs> you, you tap into the very real parts about our mental health and our, uh, our, our functioning, right? Friends, school, what's happening at home and thereby we get a sense of how they are doing, you know, sleep, eating. Yes. These are all really good indicators and windows into how um, kids are doing. And I often say to parents, you know, when you're wanting to do that check in to see how your kid is doing, you're not going to ask them necessarily, are you depressed? You know, you're paying attention to right. all the ways that they are living and existing friends, school, and so forth to get that idea, right? Yes. Why should we pay attention to our children's mental health and what could be some outcomes, you know, should we ignore it? Well, I think mental health or emotional health is just as important as your physical health. And overlooking or not addressing problems when they first come up or they first, um, children first start having a problem, they can become bigger problems, much bigger problems, more serious problems as they get older. So it's important to identify them um, and get resources and help for your kids because they, they usually don't go away on their own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're really tapping into this idea, you know, to intervene early on, early right? On, yes. Be before things sort of become so unraveled, right? Yes. Um, and uh, the sooner we can pay attention to some of, you know, if you're having those conversations, how's school, how are your friends? You get that sense, that check-in, and then yes. can sort of 
as uh, my grandmother used to say, nip it in the bud, but, right? Yes. Because <laughs> when that. kids are struggling, you know, emotionally, they may have physical complaints like headaches or stomach aches. You know, they don't really participate fully in school or family activities. They just don't do well. And, you know, they can learn maladaptive or not good ways um, for handling stress and emotional problems that become bigger as they get older. Right, right. Um, what are some of the signs to look for if we have concerns that our kids are struggling um, with mental health? You talked about tapping into school, friends, and things like that. What are some other things that either you're looking for in the clinic when the patient is in front of you, or maybe you're talking with a parent about things to look out for? Um. Well, as parents, you know your child better than anybody. Um, and oftentimes you're so close that you don't see what's going on, but you have to step back and think, is this how my child usually, you know, responds to stressful situations or substitute teachers? Look how their behavior and their emotions are. Are they getting unreasonably angry, irritable over minor issues? Are they not sleeping at night? For little kids, are they having nightmares? Mm -hmm. um, are they avoiding doing things that they, that they used to enjoy, whether it's football or you know, being on the debate team or being part of the spelling um, bee, and they have no interest in that? That's a major concern. You know, not wanting to be with friends, being you know, just, you know, teens like to be alone and have their private time, but just spending all their time alone without being with their friends in their room, not engaging with family. Um, those are signs that you, that you're worried about. Right. Right. I would, all, I would add too, you know, we're just in a digital age and many of yes. our young, young people spend a lot of time on video games and on social media. And so it's difficult to kind of catch the signs when that yes. world is invisible to us. And so um, in terms of looking for the signs, you know, having sort of like a, a digital culture in your family where parents are checking into their digital lives. I think that's very important. Is so important. important. Yeah. I know. I've even had parents will have contracts with kids and say, okay, you have a We've purchased a cell phone or a tablet for you to use. You have access to these sites. And, you know, as part of the contract, I may go through and look at your browsing history, see where you've been. I may ask for your phone. Um, and that's part of the contract. And I think that's important for kids to know. Yes, yes. We have to tap into that window to see the signs, right? Yes, yes, um, yes. What, what is their history? Who are they talking to? And then having conversations. I, you know, I notice you play games with, you know, cat, mouse, one, two, three. Right. Yes. <laughs> Who's, Who's that? that? Who's yes. that? You know? Yes. Um, so within Wayne Pediatrics, behavioral health care resources including social workers are part of the care that's available to families um, within our practice. What's been your experience partnering with social workers in the care of patients and navigating um, mental health concerns? Well, social workers can be a tremendous asset. They're aware of um, not just counseling resources in the community, um, for mental health specifically, but they're aware of neighborhood activities and programs, tutoring programs, other enrichment programs that parents may not be aware of that would be appropriate for their, for their child. So yeah. I think they're a very good resource, um, uh, especially um, getting to know your neighborhood. Maybe you're new to the area or a lot of times parents just aren't very good with the digital devices themselves. They are not able, you know, there's not a yellow pages anymore. They're not able to find resources for their kids. And I think social workers are a tremendous, tremendous help with that. Yeah, something that's a very um, real concern sometimes thinking about the families that we, we serve in our practice at Wayne Pediatrics, you know, the a title social worker carries with it, um, you know, some challenges in terms of stigma and 
some families and parents are very wary, right? Yes. I don't want to talk to the social worker because the social worker means you're going to try to take my kids away or you're going to try to say that I'm not doing something that I should do as a parent. And so I know that I have had families who, no, I don't, I don't need to talk to the social worker because they are, yes. they're very concerned about is this person going to intrude and take something away and take advantage of me? So, um, and, and that's a part of the cultural experience of a lot of families of color. Um, how do you introduce to families to kind of deal with some of those concerns, you know, either social work or, you know, psychology or mental health in, in particular? Well, what I try to say, I, I will often say, have you ever worked with a social worker? or have you ever worked with a psychologist before to find out if they've had a negative or positive experience, or maybe they've only heard about social workers and let them know specifically what I want them to do for their child. You know, I think that for, you know, your son, the social worker can help us do X, Y, and Z. And I think that way it gives the family an expectation of what is going to be happening for this visit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So are there coping strategies or tips um, that parents or even kids can incorporate, you know, to help boost their mental health? What are some of the things you're sharing with um, I think um, because we talked about kids like to be digital, there are relaxation apps. Some of them are free. And mm -hmm. I think they're more aware of that than their parents. But I think um, um, for kids that are into um, doing that kind of relaxation. I think either, in, you know, in families that are willing, having family meditation is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to start talking with your teen about how they're feeling. And, you know, like I said, parents know their kids the best, but if you've noticed things, um, if you've heard songs on their, you know, um, that they're listening to, Mm -hmm. um, on their playlist that you find concerning or um, there was a violent incident in their school, I think you have to bring it up. You yeah. know, you have to say, I noticed you've been skipping school, skipping, you know, fourth period class. Why? And you have to start there and talk. And it's probably if there's a serious problem, it's going to take more than just that one time. You're going to have to bring it up and continue to talk about it and say, you know, I think there's more going on with you than you're letting on, but, you know, I'm here for you. I'm your parent. Be reassuring and calm and whatever it is, we can talk about it. And you don't want to talk about it now, or we can talk about it later. I yeah. think, you know, something that some families used to do, um, have a family meeting, you know, and give everybody two minutes because um, we're all short of time and, you know, have two minutes where everybody can talk about whatever is on their mind respectfully, you know? Um, and that way you get an idea of what's, you know, what's floating around in your kids, you know, your their brain, what they're concerned about, what their issues were for that week. Um, yeah. Now that we can get out more because of some of the pandemic restrictions, restrictions, trying to get outside once the weather gets better, um, museums, go to the park, um, um, have activities because exercise um, and social interaction are good ways to relieve stress. Just not being alone, um, being out and about, you know, with parents. And then I think you have to talk, we talked about screen time, talk with your pediatrician about how much time is appropriate given on your child's age. Yeah. Um, you know, find out how much time are they online. I think that's important. And many of our families do have significant life stressors. And I think that parents have to talk with their kids about it. You have to be, you know, aware of what they can understand given their age and their degree of um, maturation, but have age appropriate discussions that you're, I know you know about such and such going on, but mom and dad, mom and grandma, we're handling it this way. And then I'll let you know if there's a problem. I think those are, are things that, you know, um, help kids know that, you know, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And they need to hear from that from their parents. Um, and then, you know, we see so much violence, whether it's on the screen 
or people have traumatic things in their life, I think that's the time to sit down and say, how did you feel about watching that? Or how did you feel about that shooting at the mall we saw on television? Yes. That was pretty scary. And, you know, with younger children, you can reassure them that we're going to be safe. We're going to do this when we go to the mall. And I think for older kids, because they're often out on their own with their friends, have a safety plan. If something happens, regardless of what it is, you know, if call 911, call the police, um, call your dad, call me. Um, and, you know, work that out ahead of time. So kids aren't hesitant to say, hey, mom, maybe I'm somewhere I shouldn't be, but I need help. And yeah. I think those are kind of things that, that can be helpful for parents. Yeah, um, the big takeaway that I'm hearing is this idea of open communication. I don't think that yes. you can say that enough. You don't have to talk about these things as a professional would. The point is to talk, right? Yes. To, to, to provide a space to have conversations with your kid about how they're doing and also to reflect on how you're doing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this, this thing is happening in our family and it's hard for me, but yes. you know, this is what I'm doing to take care of myself. All that is important. So, but what do parents and caregivers do and where can they turn if they need help and have concerns for their kids? Well, I always say in a crisis situation, call 911. Um, you know, if you feel that it's an emergency or it's a crisis with a mental health issue with your child, don't hesitate to call 911. That's what they're there for. In other situations, start with your pediatrician. Um, you want to go to that person. They have resources in their office or they can refer you to um, to help you um, understand and identify what's going on. Sometimes all you know is, there's, is there a problem. And they can be a person that can help you say, I think this and this is the cause of the problem and this is how we need to address it. And if not, you know, we will get extra help and we'll figure this out, but you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. A pediatrician is such a great first option when you're not sure what to do. They will help you figure out what to do to kind of um, to deal with that. And I, we're so lucky that, you know, you bring all of this into your practice here at Wayne Pediatrics. Well, thank you for joining us today for Detroit Peace Talk. For more about Wayne Pediatrics or Dr. Marshall, visit waynepediatrics.org and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for new shows posting monthly every first Wednesday. And remember, pediatricians are the best option for the medical needs of children. Take care.